My name is Charles Levine and I decided to build a big turbo all-wheel drive GLI. So originally when I big turbo swapped this car, it was great because you know, it had the power you wanted, but then no matter how much traction you had on the front wheels, it just wouldn't go anywhere. So when I decided to take on the crazy project and do this, I knew that it would just totally change the car. So from day one, first gear, second gear, and the front wheel drive configuration, useless, absolutely useless. Some of third gear was also useless. Using the all wheel drive uh, really helped to plant the car, get it turning through corners and stuff like that as well. So I upgraded a lot of other things like the exhaust, the rear sway bar, because those things had to be done in order to actually get the all wheel drive working. What it came down to is uh, I went and saw one of my uh, friends at FixFest one year who had actually all wheel drive swapped his Gen 1 GLI. He had mentioned how easy it was for the GLIs because originally the Jettas essentially were built and designed to have the all-wheel drive components and they canceled it at the last minute. So we started doing a lot of this research, seeing what is required for it. And it turns out the only things that really need to be done are like five or six rivets and then getting all the parts and swapping them in. So originally I was looking for a parts car for the thing. A lot of the time there's just not parts cars available or the parts were just rusted so I wound up going on eBay for a lot of stuff looking at a lot of European sites to try and find different part numbers that I might be able to get things cheaper. Uh, so I wound up piecemealing this entire thing together from eBay and other sites. You guys had made your you know, rear wheel drive video. We saw that after we wound up building this thing, but originally we didn't have any of that information. We originally tried to get this thing done in two days. Some of the parts were just not what we needed. We had to swap everything back to front wheel drive because of the Passat mismatch. I'm sure Paul and you guys can <laughs> understand the frustration there. Um, and sometimes I learn things then teach them to people. Like Passat Haldexes don't fit in Mark V's. Did you know that? No, I didn't know that. <laughs> According to Max's research, which was clearly <laughs> shitty research, <laughs> that was true. A couple months later, we wound up getting all the pieces in. Actually, it was a fun experience because, well, fun. The transmission didn't work originally when we put it in. We found out later that the uh, tone ring for the transmission input shaft was actually separated from the shaft itself. So I had first, third, and fifth gears. Uh, didn't find this out way later on in the story, but originally we were planning on putting the Mark 7 Golf R DSG in because the Mark 6s didn't come with them. Well, that didn't work out. What we wound up having to do is take my GLI transmission, separate it apart completely, and I wound up doing this in my home garage after we found out that the transmission wasn't working. Put it back together with an all-wheel drive LSD and then slapped the all-wheel drive bell housing onto it so it would actually fit the transfer case for the car. Quite frankly, it wasn't that fun. Uh, it took a good six months of time. Fun as in the eye of the beholder. So some days it was fun, other days it was really stressful. One of the biggest things was making sure that you swapped over all the bearing races. So that way all the bearings that were in the GLI originally matched up with the case half. Uh, so that way everything matched perfectly when you put it back together. We got the GLI swapped over down in Miami at Volkswagen MIA. Huge shout out to those guys. After we got it all swapped, put it on the ground and then go to drive it off. And then you just got all these codes that popped up. Essentially, I just said, you know what? I'm gonna go for it. We don't know what's wrong with the car. Probably a stupid thing at the time, but I had to get home. Jumped in the car, drove it home. And then the most frustrating part about all that is finding out that the transmission itself was not good. And so never opening a transmission before in my life, uh, decided just to do it. Long nights, uh, tears from both my family, the kids, uh, <laughs> myself included. But at the end, once it came together, it, it was beautiful. I drove it down the street and it, it was flawless. Next, we went on to the drive shaft. That was kind of an interesting piece because the Jetta itself is kind of like a amalgamation of the Passat and a Mark VI. 
So what I actually wound up doing is grabbing a Passat drive shaft from a old B6 unit. Worked perfectly, it's a little bit long. You didn't have to cut it down or anything like that. But what I found was uh, when you were really getting onto it, it would bind a little bit. So I did a little bit of testing, if you will, buying other drive shafts because that's what experimenting uh, does when you <laughs> all-wheel drive a project. I settled on a Golf R drive shaft from a Mark 7. It works perfectly. It's a little short for what its intended purpose is, but eventually I'd like to get it lengthened. After that comes the Mark 6 Gen 4 Haldex. Gen 5 stuff just doesn't work with the car yet. I actually picked up a VD Veer uh, Haldex controller and they have the capability of it, but essentially we weren't sure if it was gonna work with my application. Again, we originally had a, a Haldex from a Passat Gen 4. I found out that that Haldex is actually 30 mils wider than the Golf R Haldex. And I don't know if that was in the video from ShopDat, but I figured that out because I kept breaking axles. The axles for the Passat and Golf R are the same size and what they do is space out the Haldex and the, the outside knuckles to compensate for the wider track there. After a month of breaking three, four axles, I wound up throwing the Mark VI Golf R knuckles back into the rear of this car, throw some spacers on it, and now it's driving perfectly. Did you have to do a bunch of cutty, cutty stuff? Like we had to do in our video? No, actually, I didn't have to do any cutty cutty stuff. So here's the fun part is if you guys want to do this, it's really simple with caveats. To get the drive shaft in, it's four rivets. Um, you create a mount system. For the fuel tank, you use almost all of the original bolt holes for the side fuel tank uh, versus the all wheel drive tank. You just throw a rivet in where they have an actual spot there already um, and it works beautifully. It bolts right in. There's no need to cut the pan, no need to fashion your own system, no Paul heads poking up through the pan or anything like that. What made me pick a GLI? Project Gen 3 GLI is kind of where it came through uh, with me actually getting the car from my wife because she wanted something bigger at this point. The kids are starting to grow up. They're three and eight now. So, you know, they needed more room than just the little back seat that we have here. So I wound up getting her an Atlas. And what Project Gen 3 GLI did for me is allowed us to big turbo swap it. And at first I wasn't sure whether or not I wanted to do it. It was supposed to just be wheels and bags and be done with it. Uh, that was what this car was. Uh, little did my wife know, um, there was a big turbo swap that we could do to the car and it wasn't that complicated to do. Unfortunately, with a lot of lack of tuning, uh, it makes it very hard for the GLI. You have to go to specific places to just get a basic stage three tune. And it can be kind of frustrating because we don't have that support. But at the end of the day, there are people that support us. I know uh, Reflect Tuning uh, does a great file for this car. Um, I know Malone supported us in the past. It's pushing around 350 horsepower right now, roughly based off of people with similar numbers and figures. We have a DB V2 IS38 hybrid turbo. This is their V1 with a triple ball bearing housing. Uh, we also have MPI installed on the vehicle. It's not quite activated yet. We're working with tuning on that eventually. And essentially the turbo is literally backwards. In order to get it in there, we had to reroute the entire coolant system to be like the, the seventh generation Golf R and GTIs. Uh, the difference is there's a lot of mechanical items instead of digitally controlled uh, valves. Um, what's next on this car is this will be getting a Golf R um, high pressure fuel pump with an Autotech um, piston to provide a little bit more fuel as well. We should be able to push around hopefully 500 wheel horsepower and about 450 foot pounds of torque with this built transmission. When we get to that point, it should be just a monster. It's going to be fun. And it's all for my kids, honestly. Like, I built this thing for the kids. They enjoy going out, having fun, 
you know, floor it, daddy. That's that's the that's the coolest thing you can do as a parent is just having your kids enjoy the car with you. So while we were in here doing the coolant refresh on this car, we also added a new coolant bottle because we all know Volkswagens, their coolant bottles look great after a little bit of time. We also added into the car stage one BFI mounts. This is their version two. Um, because they actually reduced a lot of the MVH that we were having in the car originally, especially with the front wheel drive. We originally had their stage two mounts in the car, but once we went to all wheel drive, it, it mellowed out the car a lot as far as engine rock. So the stage ones are perfect for daily driving and enjoying the car. With the MPI, we had to install the MPI on the car and it took a lot of rewiring into the ECU harness and everything. We had to route the, the wire underneath the uh, additional boost pipes here into the ECU. And I tried to do it as factory as possible. That's the main thing here is I try to do everything as OEM as possible so that way it comes out beautifully. Um, one of the biggest complications was getting these boost pipes that I mentioned into the car. You guys can see how tight it is and actually if you uh, play with the car enough you can actually kiss the uh, boost pipe there. So there's some R&D still going into this obviously and nothing's ever perfect when you do stuff like this. Uh, but eventually next year what I'd like to do is get the refinement into the car. The shifter on this car is a manual GLI shifter with a Teos shift knob. Um, very hard to find, and if you can find them, they're normally pretty expensive. Uh, the car also did not come with Android Auto or uh, Apple CarPlay from factory, so I had to retrofit that. You have to swap over everything. The radio, the camera, everything's digital now. So you have to rerun those wires or readapt those wires. The steering wheel is also an addition to the car. Um, originally it came with a brushed aluminum look and I just one day decided to reach out to a company uh, and they said, yeah, let's, let's go ahead and get your wheel and we can replace it for you however you wanted to. Uh, so the sides are breathable leather. Um, and then the top is Alcantara with a stripe just to let me know, like, you know, traditional race car stuff. Went with the red just to make sure that it matched the interior. The center console for this car normally doesn't come with rear AC anymore. Like I know on the GTIs, Golf R's, things like that, they all have them, but for Jetta's, they just said, no, we're gonna cheap out. So what it required me doing was grabbing a center console from Germany because they make three different styles and all of them are different. The only the German version has the AC vents on the inside of the car with the tunnel that it requires. So you had to remove the entire center console, replace it, get vents, and then certain types actually had the, the piano black in them. So it was very hard. I had to get this part imported from China to <laughs> get it all situated. And this is what I do for my kids. <laughs> These RPF ones are black chrome. They're 17 by nine plus 45 offset. For the fronts, they fit almost perfectly with a three millimeter spacer, but the rears, because of the all wheel drive aspect, I had to use a 15 millimeter adapter and then throw bolts on them. One of the unfortunate side effects is you can't run fancy uh, lug nuts or anything like that. But behind there is a nice Golf R 6R brake package that I bought from ShopDap Auto Parts. So <laughs> these headlights are the Bi-Xenons. They come factory on the GLI 2015. The only difference between the standard uh, GLI Xenons and this particular model is they have the red inserts in them. So I think they're considered kind of rare. I've been told that, I don't know for sure though. Um, I do know that they are expensive and uh, <laughs> if I do ever have to replace them, I know somebody's probably taken them. It's my passion project, but it basically is used to take my kids to and from school, have some fun with them, scare the crap out of my wife, uh, and then you know just have some fun with it.